All right, so what did I learn? The biggest thing I learned was setting goals. This is huge, guys. Setting goals is so huge to getting to your, the end result. It is just so huge. I had the vision, right, of building the cabin. I know I knew I wanted to do that because I heard people talk about it, that they wanted to do that. And I'm like, no, why, why are you going to wait? I'm doing it now. So I built that cabin. I had ideas on how I wanted to build it. And then I had to get the planning going. And to build, by the way, in, in the East Mountains, it's still the Bernalillo County. You have to follow all the rules and regulations, just like I was building here in the city. So it took a lot of planning, a lot of strategy to make it happen. And again, the motivation wasn't a big deal for me because I was mov motivated to go there every weekend because during the week, remember, I was studying all these Microsoft exams to study to pass all these Microsoft exams that I had to pass during the week. So when I went to work on that cabin on the weekends, it was really more of a, it was really um, uh, a way for me to get away from everything that I was doing during the week. So it was kind of a pleasant thing for me, but it was still a lot of work. Okay. But to get to that success, what I learned from building the cabin, go ahead and go to the next slide is setting goals. This is so important. No matter what you want to do in life, and by the way, you can do anything. Honestly, you can do anything. If the only person that will hold you up from getting where you want to be is yourself. Your mind will give you 15, 20, 30, 100 reasons on why you can't do something, okay? Don't listen. Don't listen to those things. You can do anything that you want to do by setting goals. You really can. Now, here's the trick. Here's the trick about goals. This is what I learned, okay? When you're setting a goal, and set that goal as high as you possibly can, okay? When you set that goal, no matter what it is, say you want to be a, a professional um, designer by 2028, okay? And you want to be one of the best professional designers in the industry by 2028. That if you look at that goal way out there in 2028 and you know that's going to take a lot of effort to get out there and be one of the best, you don't look at your goal way out there. What you do, next slide, is you look at your goals one step at a time. Don't look at 2028 because you know by 2028 you want to be one of the best designers in the world. You want to go to one of the best schools. You want to, you know, you want to accomplish certain things. What you want to do when you when you set your goals, and I do hope you set goals because you can do anything that you want to do by setting those goals. Never sit idle, by the way. There should be never a time where you're bored and there's nothing to do because there's too many things that you can learn at any point in time. When you're setting goals, you set your goal for that first week and you get to that goal. And then you set your next goal to that next month, what you want to accomplish by that next month and what you want to accomplish by that first year, okay? Don't look at that long-term goal. You look at the short-term goals. And that's what I did with the cabins. Every time I, was, I would say, I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to get this done in, by the end of this month. And that, that would be my goal. By the way, I failed, yes. Sometimes I would not meet those goals. And failing is part of life. Remember I said earlier, it's okay to fail. Just fail faster and move on, okay? So although, you know, I set my goal, okay, three months from now, I want to be here on this project. And sometimes I would meet that goal and sometimes I would not, okay? But I do not give up, right? You keep going and you will get to that goal. But don't look at the long-term goal. Look at the short-term goal and you will accomplish what you want to accomplish. I promise you, you will, okay? Ruben, you did tell me to tell you if a student raised their hand. Um, oh, yeah. We have a question from Edith, if she would like to unmute really quick before sure. we move on. Yeah, certainly, sure. Yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, what was the website again? Sorry. Oh, oh, oh it's the, uh, the um, Department of Labor Statistics. It's the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, I think is what it is. And what I can do, Lindsay, is I'll send you the link to that uh, website. 
uh, and you can share that uh, on there as well. So um, I think that's, that's what it's called. It might be a little bit different than that because I don't remember the, the full title, but it's the uh, U.S. Department of Labor uh, Statistics, I believe. Excellent. Thank you. Sure, sure. You got so, 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. I was just about to ask you that how much time I have left. And, you know, again, this is this, these are things I can talk about quite a bit. So, all right. So I really hope you guys are thinking about careers. There's so much cool stuff that you guys can do out there right now. Um, and by the way, like I said earlier, everything is about experiences, right? And you may start in a career. You may end up in a different career. Okay, so always think about that as well. But try to find something that really interests you. And so, so what do you need to know uh, about college? Most of these careers nowadays, by the way, that are available do require some type of either a certification, uh, some type of degree. And you'd be very surprised how many careers you can get into just with an associate's degree. And if you don't know by now, an associate's degree is usually about two years if you go full time. OK, there's careers that require bachelor's degrees. There's careers that re require master's degrees as well. There's all different types of careers out there. But a lot of a lot of careers just to get your foot in the door sometimes just require an associate's degree. And that's step one. There's many there's many um, opportunities. Also, if you're looking to get in a career based type career in terms of training, there's uh, programs that you can take in college. Um, basically, uh, that's what I did, by the way, when I was playing in Hollywood, I was also attending a community college. I forgot to mention that earlier. When I was playing in Hollywood, uh, I was also attending a community college at the same time. But there are programs, literally, that you could knock out in one year that'll get you into a good paying career if that's the path that you want to take. Okay, so keep in mind there's so many options for you. Please do some research about what's available. And hopefully you can attend. Uh, I'm going to tell you about a program that we have. Maybe you can attend one of our virtual sessions and, uh, and learn, learn a little bit more there. So college, how can I afford college, right? When I was young, I didn't even think college was an option for me. It's just something I didn't think about. I, it wasn't in our, you know, our daily vocabulary. Remember, I grew up in a, in a Hispanic family with six kids. Um, it's just, we just didn't talk about that. We didn't know any better, you know, first generation. Um, so can I afford college? Yes, you can. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so what I do now, by the way, in the marketing department is I help students and families, and I talk about the financial aid process. And I talk about federal and state aid. There is money available to go to college no matter where you want to go, in the country, in state, a career school, okay? There are things called scholarships and grants, right? And scholarships and grants, this is money that's available to you that you do not have to pay back. Right. There is money out there for you to go to school, any school, no matter where you want to go in the country. And I'm going to give you a, a virtual link later that you can go to if you want to find out more. But what I also wanted to mention, because sometimes people shy away from this, students shy away from this because we know that student loans have a really bad name. Right. But if I was a young kid that did not have money to go to school and I, le and I needed a little bit more money to go to school, I would certainly borrow money to go to school, okay? And right now, a federal loan is 2.75 interest rate. That is the lowest interest rate I've seen since I've been in this business, okay? And again, I didn't know this at the time, but in the 80s, there was a lot of kids going to school and taking out loans and going to school and getting into a very good paying career, okay? A lot of Hispanic kids didn't know that at the time. A lot of them would shy away from that. A lot of them didn't even know about it, okay? So if it takes a student loan to get you into college, into that career, then so be it because you are investing in yourself. Yes, you may have to pay it back, but the key is only borrow what you need. And that's what I mean. You really want to learn about finances because you should not have to borrow very much, especially if you're going to stay in New Mexico. A lot of times you don't have to borrow anything if you're going to attend a public college or university here in New Mexico. So I do want to say that. OK, um, so very important. Don't shy away uh, from from uh, doing what you need to do to get your foot on campus. It's so important. OK, next slide. All right. What I do is I go out and I speak with students and families about what is known as the FAFSA. 
okay? And I love this meme here, by the way. One of the counselors sent this meme to me, and I'm going to use it for our newsletter this month, by the way. So, you know, Oprah, <laughs> when a student tells me they've never heard of the FAFSA, right? So what the FAFSA means is free application for federal student aid. Free application for federal student aid. Federal student aid is money for college, okay? You can get up to $6,345 if you qualify for the full amount of what's known as the Pell Grant, okay? And that's what I do is I talk to students and families about how to receive money to help them pay for college. So the FAFSA is a big step. Next slide. So the free application for federal student aid. So if you're a high school senior, you probably know about this because you should be doing this right now, okay? The FAFSA application is an online application. By the way, you can even do it on your phone now, okay? This is an application that you fill out. This is the application where you select those colleges or universities or trade schools that you're thinking about attending, right? Because they're gonna receive your information. And once they receive your information, they're going to be able to put together what's known as a financial aid package or an award offer to offer you so you can attend their public college or university or trade school so you can get that education for that career that I hope you're hopefully planning for. Hopefully that's part of your goal, right? So you can pay for that education to get to that career. Next slide. So I always show this little simple graph here, not graph, this image uh, of what it takes right now to apply for free money for college, right? So this is you here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to complete that application again, which is known as the FAFSA, Free Application for Federal Student Aid. You're going to select all the schools that you're interested in attending, right? They're going to receive your information. So what's going to happen next is after you get accepted, because you do have to get that acceptance letter first, you're going to get an award offer. That's why it's always a good idea to have two or three schools on your list that you, you think you may want to attend because these schools have scholarships to offer you, right? Known it as institutional aid. They're also going to offer you all the federal aid that's available to you. Remember, you don't have to pay that Pell Grant money back. They're also going to offer you state aid that's available. Remember, we have state money that's available to you. Probably the one that you know about the most right now is the New Mexico Lottery Scholarship. But there's a lot more money out there available through our state as well. They're going to send you an award offer. And then that is the money that you can use to attend that public college or university and get that degree or certification or whatever your goal is for that for your education. So really, really important. Just know that, yes, there is money to go to college anywhere in the country. So don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't afford to go to college because you can. This is stuff that I wish I knew when I was your age. I, I, re I Really, I wish I knew this, but I didn't. There was nobody out there at the time telling me about free money for college. No one told me about the FAFSA. I didn't know. And I don't want you to not know. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I get so excited about talking about this because it's here for you now. And you can do anything that you want to do. You really can. Next slide, please. So if you want to learn more, every Monday, uh, we host what's known as Money Mondays. It's called uh, Money Mondays, and we talk about FAFSA. We talk about college. We will put you in a virtual room with a professional, with a financial aid professional. If you have questions about college or how to pay for college, I will put you in a room, or you can talk to me or any one of the professionals that we have available for you every Monday from 3 to 6 p.m., okay? If you need help completing your FAFSA, we will help you complete it. OK, so every Monday, just know that there is virtual help available to you and we are there for you every Monday. OK, and I will send this link out as well. And I believe this uh, this presentation will be out there for you. I'm sure Ms. Humphreys will get it out there for you somewhere where you can get it and get this link on there. But again, remember, you can do anything you want to do. So, you know, never, never, ever uh, let somebody tell you you can't. Next slide, please. Local scholarships. So I, I, you know, before I forget, we give money out every year, by the way. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a drawing today and I'm going to do a $500 drawing today. We do one every month and we give away $500 FAFSA scholarships. So if you are a senior 
uh, uh, Ms. Humphreys, I'll send you this link as well. If you are a senior, you can register for $500 scholarship or a laptop tablet, okay? Last month's winner, she chose a laptop tablet. So we got her this really cool Dell laptop tablet. She, you know, that's what she chose. So uh, all she had to do was register on our website and that's it. I don't even ask you for an essay, okay? But there are a lot of scholarships out there from local businesses as well and local communities. Uh, for example, I'm also on the Albuquerque Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce. We give out scholarships every year as well. This young lady, by the way, that you see on that picture with me, she is an amazing young lady. She was actually legally blind for almost two years, believe it or not. And she still attended UNM and got her degree. Okay, so uh, amazing young lady. I wish I had more time to tell you more about her, but we know there's a lot of amazing young folks out there like yourself, okay? Because remember, we're all unique. We all have different experiences. Next slide. So I wanna thank you for being with us today. Um, I, I hope I didn't go over too much on the time, but I do wanna say, you know, remember you can do anything and never stop learning, okay? Last tip I'm going to give you. If you want to learn how to do something, there's every resource available to you right now at your fingertips to learn, okay? You don't have to wait to learn. You can learn now, okay? And it's only going to help you later when you're in college. So never wait to learn. I didn't, you know, know how to build a cabin. I actually bought a book that said how to build a cabin, and I learned how to do it through that book. And, and, and again, never stop learning and don't wait to learn. Learn anything you want to learn right now, okay? Yes, yes, you need that. You need that uh, degree that says you're qualified, but uh, but doesn't mean you have to wait to learn something. So always learn. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for allowing me to be here today. And I look forward to talking to more uh, young students here in the near future. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ruben. Um, I will give it a chance to anybody who's on the call who would like to unmute, but we're going to be respectful of everyone's time and we'll do that quick. And then we'll do one question from the chat box and then we'll let everyone get going. Awesome. Sorry, I do have a question. Um, are these resources also available for undo undocumented um, students? Right. Yes, there's certainly. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, there's a lot of resources for undocumented students. That's one of the things that we do. We help with. We have some excellent resources. Um, again, I would advise uh, logging into our virtual Money Mondays and uh, there are professionals that are usually with us every week that help undocumented students. Uh, there's a list of uh, scholarships that are available. Uh, not, and by the way, undocumented students also qualify for a lot of our state aid. For example, the New Mexico Lottery Scholarship as well, but there's other scholarships that they qualify for, but there's also institutional scholarships that are available to undocumented students as well. But yes, yes, um, and on our website as well, nmeaf.org, we also have resources for undocumented students. But really, I love putting students with professionals uh, virtually face-to-face -face because the best thing you can do is get that one-on-one -on -one, uh, advice from these uh, resources that we have available to you. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Edith. And just like Ruben said, I will um, be sending a follow-up email to everyone on the call today, and I'll make sure that the links that have been mentioned and the slides that had all this information on it are with are getting sent out to you as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. A question from the chat, Ruben. Um, when do you have to pay back the loans, and what is a loan deferment? Uh, okay, let's do the first one. When you uh, graduate uh, college, you can start paying back your loan. I believe it's uh, you can postpone it up to six months um, before you even have to start paying on that loan. And there's different types of repayment options. There's so many different types of repayment options. For example, and remember, we're talking about federal loans here, by the way. For example, say you get out of college and you start working for an employer. Uh, there's types of loans where you actually only pay a certain percentage of, of your uh, of your salary, I think it's like 10% uh, or less that goes towards that repayment option. 
there's a lot of repayment options available to you when you get into repayment. And that's why I said you don't have to start repayment until after you graduate high school. And I think you can take up to six months before you have to make your first payment. Uh, we do have some loan professionals uh, on our um, virtual mo uh, Money Mondays as well, for sure. And those are the types of questions they can really expand on a little bit better than I can. So good question, by the way. And the next question was... What is loan deferment? Loan deferment, basically, there's programs where you can defer payment on your loan because of a certain a thing. Uh, again, another thing that these loan professionals can talk about. Uh, so they just defer your payment on those loans for a later time. Okay. So. Sorry, Ruben. Uh, I was kind of late, so I have a lot of questions. Is this no. um, program only for seniors at um, high schools or can, um, like, kids from middle school that are interested in going to college be part of it you know uh, I think I think any of our volunteers that log in virtually would help any any age that comes in and to have questions that has questions yeah so. excellent thank you so much Ruben I'm gonna wrap us up so that everyone can uh, have the rest of their day so thank okay. you so much to everyone who's on the call today and thank you to the participants who unmuted and asked questions this was fantastic um, and so just following the presentation, Ruben's going to send me the links that he mentioned, and I will make sure that everyone gets the links and the slides that were informative for the um, money or financial portion of the event. And then also with that being said, we do post send out a post-program mindset survey. If you complete the survey, you'll be entered into a chance to win a gift card. And we pick a winner from every session uh, for a gift card. So please make sure you fill out that survey and that you can uh, get that um, opportunity for you or your students. Lastly, please join us next week as we welcome Liesl Schmidt from US Bank and Georgie Ortiz from Clifton Larson Allen. And they will be talking about how to make the most of your earning potential by making budgets and understanding your paycheck. So thank you so much to everyone on the call. Keep an eye out for registration links and the all of the meeting links for these events will be sent to you about 9 a.m. on the day of. So just keep an eye out for your email. And then thank you so much, Ruben, and thank you to someone and everyone on the call today. And I hope to see you all next week.